Of course, there's also another way of how you could use uh, dummy variables in a time series regression context than just to model seasonal variation. It's actually pretty good if you want to assess the impact of a sudden and unexpected event. So, for example, after the oil price shock, most households spent a larger share of their income on energy because the price of oil increased sharply. So let's say we want to incorporate this fact into our model that wants to explain the uh, share of the energy bill. And let's say we have monthly data of the share of the energy bill on household total expenditure. And let's say our data ranges from January 1965 to December 1978, so that we include the um, oil price shock. So what we do is we first plot our time series data, of course. So let's say this is our plot and T is for the time and S is for the share of the energy bill. And let's say our data, uh, let's say our data looks something like this. Okay, so it looks like this. Okay, so this is our data. So as you can see, we have a lot of variation, but no obvious trend. Also, there is a point in time where the share sharply increases. And let's not use seasonal dummies, but instead let's use uh, a month average temperature as an explanatory variable so that our model becomes, so let me get another color. So we want to explain this share right over here by a month's average temperature. And let's say our model looks like this. So shares are dependent variable at time t equal to constant alpha 1 plus beta 1 times the average temperature at time t. Okay, so this is our model. Um, by inspection, we see that the sharp increase, so the sharp increase over here, this is what I'm talking about, we see that the sharp increase in the uh, share happened in October 1973, the date of the old price shock. Now, how can we include this knowledge into our model? Well, actually, it's pretty simple. Uh, let's construct a dummy variable. Okay, so let's construct a dummy variable that indicates whether the old price shock has happened or not. So the dummy variable is equal to zero if there is no old price shock or if the old price shock has not happened yet and one if the old price shock has happened. Okay, so this is our dummy variable. So our model actually becomes share at time t is equal to alpha 1 plus beta 1 uh, times temperature at time t plus alpha 2 this alpha 2 times uh, shock this is our dummy variable at time t and let's include some error term over there at time t now we get the estimates and see that uh, alpha 2, so let me get another color, so we get the estimates and we see that this coefficient over there, alpha 2, is actually statistically significant with a value or with an estimate that is equal to, so alpha 2, let's say, is equal to, let's say, 2. Now, what does that mean? Well, it tells us that the old price shock increased the average of the energy share by 2% or whatever measure we use. So let me explain this logic graphically, okay? So we have our time series over there and let's say we measure two means. So M1 for the first mean and M2 for the second mean. And M1 is the mean of the time series before the old price shock and M2 is the mean of the time series after the old price shock. And as you can see, the means or the mean increases and what our dummy uh, variable actually did was to check whether the difference is statistically significant. So basically what alpha 2 does is it estimates the difference between these two means. This is what alpha 2 uh, does. Now, it also checks, of course, whether this difference is statistically significant. So you can see the dummy variables are a very great tool or a good tool for modeling the impact of historical events.